Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is an introduction of Google Classroom for UET Peshawar teachers and uh, we will learn how to connect it and then what are different features that our teachers can use to teach online classes using Google Classroom. So first of all in your browser you have to go to the website called classroom.google.com once you are on this website and if it's the first time you have you went to that website this is the screen you will see so you simply cl uh, click on go to classroom and then it will ask for your username as a UET Peshawar teacher you have to use your UET Peshawar ID kindly do not use your Gmail ID clicking next entering the password I am not going to tell you and this is the first time once you connected you what you will be seeing on the screen now because I already have started some classes and also joined them a few of them as a teaching assistant and in some of them as a student as well uh, just for practice purpose uh, so this is the first screen I'm seeing but you if you have connected for the first time uh, you will see a blank screen here uh, only Google Classroom on the top and this plus icon and your picture if there is but if you have already started uh, some classes you will see classes like this or if you someone has added you as a teaching assistant or as a student in their class uh, you will also automatically see classes uh, on the screen and there will be an admit button on it that you can click and then admit to join that class as a student or as a um, TA or teaching assistant uh, when you will make your own classes and you will add students in them the students will be able to see being admitted to that class on their first screen here but for teachers uh, if you are starting your first class click on this plus symbol to create or join a class so students can only join a class there uh, there's this option create class is not provided to students if you can if you cannot see cl create class option uh, you have to contact CMS uh, Mr. Swell server or uh, a, talk to your coordinator to uh, ask CMS to change your status from student to teacher because by default it was set to student uh, but if you can see this this means you are already registered to CMS as a teacher so here's the first thing you will click on create class to create a class so first thing first you will uh, write the class name now uh, class names should be like that that once the student will see them they should be able to quickly grasp that what is the subject and then uh, is it the one they uh, they want to uh, start now or not so uh, notice the first name here is not very clear uh, students don't know what subject it is it just says it is eighth semester and then something spring um, uh, to 2020 course or something so it's not very clear but uh, notice here this uh, name and the other name they are more appealing so uh, what you will do is you will write the name of the course first of all so let it be for example my course is computer programming and uh, I afford the, uh, the name for this the name of the class this is not the name of the course or the subject itself so you here it should be very clear so I, what because um, some sections are taught by uh, other teacher as well so I'll specifically write by doctor my name and, uh, and now once students will see that they will know that they don't have to join the other other teacher but actually this is the computer programming class by my by dr. Adil who uh, which they want to join uh, in section uh, mind it if you are teaching more than one sections you have to create separate class for each sections as per UT policy so for example already I have added a class for computer programming for section M and for you as well so what I will do is I will create another one for section E for example so I'll write section E and just for clarity I'll also write this is actually a spring 2020 um, semester so now uh, because if I'm teaching this course in uh, coming some new semester in 2021 or if I've already taught this course in previous semester which is 2019 so in that case for me and students as well it will be confusing that which class actually they are to join so uh, for for me I can now easily differentiate between 2020 and 2019 
classrooms which I have created. So it's better to write uh, Spring 2020 with the um, name of the section there. And here you will write the name of the subject. So subject name is proper specifically as per prospectus of UDP Shower. It is CE107L Computer Programming for Civil Engineers. And uh, the room uh, currently it is online. So I'll write online. And then uh, if I'm teaching a regular uh, class, inshallah, soon, um, then I'll write a room number here so that once I'm giving a lecture in the class and students are submitting assignments and quizzes online, so they know which room to go for lectures. And then and th this is the point from where they'll get that information. So I'll click create now. And after a while, it will create a separate class for section E for me as well. So here you can see section E has been added as a blank class and then let's open it up like this. So now in future, whenever you will open that classroom, this is the screen you will see. There are four tabs at the top. One is stream, classwork, people and grades and also the settings here. So these are the five things that you'll always be using for this class. So that is the complete set of online things that you need uh, for online lecturing so stream classwork people grades and settings so for, let's start with the stream first of all so in the stream you're seeing the name of the class and the section and also a class code students will also see the similar screen and uh, in the drop down here we can see the proper subject and uh, name and the location of the room as well uh, if you are uh, not happy with the background here you can change that theme from here as well or make upload your own theme on the background in the class code this is the code that if you give to students or the CR of your section uh, the CR will distribute it to the other class fellows and then the students can always click that uh, join classroom option and then typing this they will connect to this classroom automatically so you don't need to go to people tab and then for students click on invite students and write email addresses of all these students here for example, for me, it can be like uh, uh, batch 17 students like this. It's, you have to select a specific students for this particular section. To, if you want to avoid that in the stream, the class code that, that is mentioned here, you can see it widely on the screen like this. Uh, this code, you can deliver it to the CR and they will distribute it to the students and students can easily join the class using this. Now, there's a drawback uh, that um, irrelevant students can also join the class if they know the code but then you can always uh, de delete those students from people tab you can from this list here you can always delete them or later on you can also go in the settings and in the cl general class code option you can click uh, on the code and then you can actually reset it if you want as well and you can also disable it that once the students have connected no more students can connect on or use this code to connect this anymore so going back from settings back to the stream so this is what students are seeing and getting information from here the stream is as uh, is an interactive uh, session with students but any time of the week so even in fact any time of the semester so students can come here and then they can type their queries directly to the teacher or they can start even discussing something with their colleagues as well right from the stream as well so and you can also communicate with the students from the stream and students will take their time to view the stream again and respond to it so for example um, if I click here the next class will be in NumPy for example, I want to deliver this information to the students. If there is relevant uh, website link or there's a PDF or any other PowerPoint or Word document that I want to share related to this to the students uh, and um, for this discussion purpose, this is not for the classroom purpose, but this is for the discussion purpose. Or if I have something in Google Drive, I want to discuss um, that particular document from the Google Drive, I can upload it from here as well. Or if there is a relevant YouTube video, I can also uh, 
provide a link here then students can see that and then respond or continue the discussion on it mind it this is not um, any uh, lecture activity it is just a discussion activity that we do with the students interactively so once that is done and if it is related to other subjects as well for example in the same course with section e i'm also teaching the same course to section m as well as section u so you can also check uh, section e is already checked section m and section u is also checked so the same uh, same information will be posted on the on their stream as well so i don't need to repeat the task two more times for these sections again so this is a handy thing if you have multiple sections you can communicate with them uh, once for all uh, fine so i'll click on post um and then it will be posted not only for this class but for the other class as well and um, notice another thing that if you want to post something which is not for all students but for a group of st uh, students or for an individual student if you want to send a message to that individual for example cr of the class uh, you can select the student from here but currently because in people i don't have any students added so once that those students will be added here i will be able to see them in this drop down here and then i can select that student or that particular group of students uh, to communicate with them directly from the stream so for now i have added one information here let us check that for section e this information is here has it been posted in section u and m as well so in order to check other classes that you are teaching or sections you are teaching you can click on these three ellipses and then from here you can go to you can select the class from here or you can see the same old uh, black uh, um, same old uh, classes uh, screen like this and you can select your class from there so currently i'm i was editing section e and i'm interested to see has it been posted in section u as well so i can always click that and i can see in the stream yes there is the, this message has been posted there excellent uh, let me go back to section E again. So this time from here and once I'm with section E, I can also delete a post if I want or I want to change it back. I can edit it and I can also copy its link to be shared uh, somewhere else, perhaps on my website uh, or on the student's notice board website for civil department like we have. Um, so that's another option we have here for a stream this was all about stream uh, let's move to classwork so in the classwork in the classwork we can create assignments quiz assignments questions materials or reuse another post we already have done in some other section you can import that from here to here as well you can arrange everything under topics so for example i can start a topic for week one or week four in our case uh, let me add so now i can arrange week four assignments and other material here uh, let me create another topic of uh, um, relevant material and so any PDFs, PowerPoint slides that I have, those things I can upload. And once I'll upload them, I'll put them here. Um, we also have a Google Calendar on the top and Class Drive folder here as well. Uh, so currently in our classwork, there's nothing. So our Class Drive folder should be empty. But let's see what this class folder is. So it will open Google Drive for us and within my drive automatically a classroom named folder will be developed within it your section E folder and of course if you have other sections all of them will be within the classroom folder. So section E is currently empty. No files relevant to this section um, have been uploaded yet that's why. So let me close it from now and then we'll visit it back again time to time to see how it has changed. Um, in Google Calendar it will show you the classrooms calendar so currently there is uh, for me for other classes 
because you can see my calendar is for myself and for all other activities that I'm I've started some personal some related to our course online courses which I've joined so all of them are being shown here I can uh, turn most of them off and just if you want to see a particular section I can keep that um, turned on and um, then I will see only those activities so currently I have no activity created for this section so nothing should be there to that for some other section I have this uh, assignment activity due on 17th of April so I'll be marking those assignments um, for that particular class um, so this calendar is opened in a separate tab and here is my classroom tab back again so now I'm going to close my calendar I can revisit it anytime I want so let's create an assignment so if you create an assignment it will ask you for the title of the assignment that can be assignment number one and for example it is um, what uh, are it is related to the topic which is about numpy for example and I'll now write instructions uh, for example watch uh, the lecture video and uh, write a brief note on applications of numpy now if related to this there are other uh, documents that i want to can add to it so i can click on add and as before i can add a video related to that i can add any other file or if there are files already uploaded in google drive i can share, share them from here and i can provide a website link here as well so currently i don't want anything from there um, now on the right side here i want this assignment for this particular section e course but if the same assignment is for other sections as well for example section m and section u i can check it from here as well so now this will be for all the three sections that i'm teaching so i don't need to repeat this task for other sections also if there is a it is a specific assignment for a particular group of students uh, or there is a student uh, because of lagging you want to give that person an option to submit as another assignment so you can actually uh, keep uh, select that uh, student's uh, section and then once that is selected you can from the list from the people you'll see all those students which you have added them in the people's tab and then you can select that particular student or group of students now for this assignment if it is ungraded you can click this and select ungraded it will have no marks but if you want it to be marked for out of 10 so let's give some points to it now if there is a due date for this so let it be next week and if there is a relevant time to it you want to be submitted before a particular time on that on 20th april you can select that as well um and which to which topic it is related to so if i uh, remember if you remember we already created uh, relevant material i'm going to misspelled material there um and week four topics but you can create another topic if it is related to some other topic for example let me say week five um so it will now create a week five topic for us there as well and as we are teaching in OBE, there are there must be some relevant uh, rubrics to this assignment. So you can always click on rubrics. If you already have created them, you can reuse those rubrics. But for you, maybe you're creating it for the first time, or if the rubrics are set already, some Excel sheet you can import them from there as well. But let's create our own rubrics. So for here, for this particular assignment, um, the first rubric will be the uh, for example clarity of code so because it's about numpy and if students are writing computer uh, language code it should be in a good clear format so i want to give good marks to those students who write it in a good format so for this rubric it will have let's say 10 points uh, for a level which i'll define excellent keep adding other levels to it for example five points for average and one point for poor for example or maybe zero and then you can describe for example it's very important for students to know that how they can get excellent marks if for if a career 
font is used for code and it will be average if any other clear font for code is used and poor if normal font is used for code then poor marks for that so you can if for this particular assignment there are other uh, uh, rubrics as well beside clarity of code and let me write a description here related to uh, CLO2 for this course for example so uh, you can add other criteria as well uh, for other rubrics so currently notice the maximum points a student can get are 10 here so it's mentioned here the total rubrics marks are 10 because there's only one rubric here if you add more the total will this total will increase but for this particular rubric they're total 10 marks so if for example this um, at the maximum the student can get is 15 you will see automatically this will change to 15 uh, or maybe here if it is I change it to 12 so automatically it will change to 12 let's change it back to 10 and click on save so here we have defined one one criteria rubric you can have two or three rubrics for your project or assignment or a report or a lab report it can be anything and accordingly the rubrics will be defined now if the students are submitting their assignment in typed format then google classroom can check the originality and the plagiarism of that report and if you want to check that you can always check this option but then um, the um, if the students are submitting a photograph of handwritten assignment then of course Google classroom will not be able to mark it at the moment so you have to read it yourself and mark it accordingly so for now I'm leaving it like this from assigning this assignment you have an option to assign it right now so from now students will start seeing this assignment they will receive an uh, uh, an email directly now that an assignment be, has been assigned to you if this assignment need to be scheduled for some other day so you can click it uh, and uh, schedule it for some other uh, day as well so uh, today is 12th april so this is for coming day but for now i want it to be uh, it's assigned right away so I can choose that particular option uh, you can save it now and it will not be scheduled it will not be assigned yet but for you to carry on working on this assignment uh, and you can also delete uh, this draft if you want as well so let me assign this assignment now so once it is assigned uh, we'll see that is uh, appearing in week 5 but let's say if it was for week 4 you can always drag click uh, select and drag it to week 4 as well and I don't like this arrangement as well. I want the relevant material to be up there and I want to change the spellings here. So I'll click on the rename. And rename. So and week four should be above week five. So now I'm happy with the classwork here. So for example, now I realize that for this with this assignment, I wanted to can add some um, more material uh, in the form of PowerPoint slide maybe perhaps or something else so now I want to add it so you can always select uh, uh, before clicking on this you can all click on these ellipses here and you can click on edit and you'll be back in that edit mode although this assignment has been already emailed but you can still edit it here as well so for example you can add an existing document or youtube video or anything like that here and if you want to work on some document right now on the google cloud you can click on the create button and you can create google own word, word doc or um, um, powerpoint type slides excel type sheets or a drawing a sketch or maybe you can add a survey form with this as well if this is for this with this assignment you want to ask few specific questions in yes no or multiple choice we'll see them in quiz as well so from here you can add them as well so if you have added that particular document select then you will click on save button 
let's create one more thing i click on create and i create a quiz assignment so for taking a quiz i call it uh, first uh, or quiz uh, number one uh, about numpy i want it to be clear that students know that this is a specific quiz i talked to them about which is related to numpy and instructions uh, answer all questions in the quiz form attached so as before i can add these items or i can add uh, any of these items and form but already a form a blank quiz form has been connected to it um, so i can click on this another window will open for google form related to this particular quiz i can name the quiz any specific thing i want for example quiz number one numpy and then i call uh, the title here quiz number one description about numpy um, then i can start writing a question for example i write i want a question is uh, what is numpy and if i want uh, students to be able to choose one option for example one right it's a program it's a library or other so now students if they choose other they have to type on what what it is uh, i want it to be a must answered question so that students should be able to answer should answer it before submitting the whole quiz if they miss it uh, they will get a warning that you forgot to answer this particular question now beside this i can also create a question which is a short answer or a longer answer or multiple uh, answers uh, in the form of check boxes or from a drop drop down list they can select a particular uh, correct answer from a drop down list as well they can also upload a file uh, as well for example if uh, you are asking them to attach a um, uh, to draw a sketch of uh, uh, something then they will draw it on a piece of paper they'll take a photograph of it and they can upload it for as an answer for this question so you will be able to check that photograph or otherwise if you see they can insert if they they're not answering it you, you don't want uh, or you know that your students are not able to type their answer in the form of a paragraph here on the screen you can always ask them to answer it on a paper by hand and then attach a photograph so in that case for this question will not be of multiple choice or a paragraph form but you have to select it of a file upload type uh, you can also have a linear scale to select uh, among that and then you can play around with other options as well um so uh, let me add one more question again uh, related to this question if there is any answer key you want to give them a quick guide you can always click that and you can uh, uh, add um, uh, in, uh, an answer key to this in the form of that uh, um, for incorrect answer will be program or maybe you can you can uh, there are what could be possible uh, what how um uh, correct answer uh, a hint about it you, if uh, a hint is in the form of a video you can always click this and you can select a youtube video uh, and then they'll go through that video they learn so many things from there and then they'll be able to answer this particular question or if the, the answer is hidden in in, uh, in the form of a reading on a website and then once they will read it they will understand uh, some concept from there and then they can answer this question you can always link a website uh from there as well so for now let me just simply cancel it and then let me say this question is for let's say five points and say done to this so this is a five points question let me add another question to add another question you can add it from here you can add um you can import it from an existing quiz you can give a description or a title just like this another one right below it here if you want to add it you want to add a picture first and then you want to ask a question about it you can click it and this picture will appear right below it here or they, if you want students to see a video or lecture uh, record pre-recorded lecture first and then be able to answer or just another section like this so this is section one you can close all this information in section one and then there'll be another section two there so the whole quiz will be about uh, two sections um, 
you can if you want another similar question you can always click on this and duplicate this question and then uh, write another uh, for example what is sci pi um, but this time I want them to write a short note on it it's a required question and if you want to delete this question you can click on this button and delete it um, if you want to um, show description and response uh, should be validated it's a correct one or not you can also set those options from here as well but for now for this quiz let's keep it like this for this quiz uh, if you, once the students will be answering it you can always come back to the quiz from the same window uh, bef uh, and then uh, once you'll this op window will open again again for you you can click on responses and then uh, you'll be able to see the result of responses in the form of uh, and then you can export that in the form of excel sheets as well but let's um, leave it for future um, there are um, other settings in it too if you want to change them but for now uh, if you want to send the quiz at the moment you can send it but otherwise for now for this particular uh, quiz let let me keep or let me just click on send button so in the send you can send the student to, to uh, this quiz to a particular uh, group of students but i don't want that to be done now i'll cancel it and then if you simply close it's saving now and if you simply close it you can always come back here and click on this and it will open it again for you with the same set of questions or same settings that you saved earlier so let, let's close this for now and then once we are ready with this uh, the same type of settings then be done for this quiz and then you can assign it now or for maybe for future for now let's schedule it on uh, or uh, on 14th of april and if I schedule it now automatically at eight o'clock on 14th of april the students will get a message that there's a quiz for you and this quiz is related to the week four as well so i'll drag it and drop it right here as well uh, notice um, this is gray in color so it is uh, showing that it is scheduled one and blue means an active one and students have been uh, working on it perhaps uh, you can create uh, material from um, adding a file and then you can title it for example uh, power uh, or my on notes uh, notes on Python and then you can for example if you have added some files in it, your PowerPoint and other files here as well so you just if you say simply post to it so it will create a material notes by the name of notes here and I want it to appear right in relevant uh, material so it will I'll just simply drag it within it uh, now if you click on Google Calendar you will see that for my subject on 20th there is a, there's an assignment and I have not um, um, there are its details links and everything um, and if about the quiz because it is scheduled so it is not appearing here yet because uh, uh, it hasn't started yet once it will start automatically I will see uh, a quiz has started let me close the calendar and this was all about classwork uh, you can if there are many topics you can jump to a particular topic here and then start editing it right from there now let's talk about people so in people here you have teachers and students so in teachers you can add a teaching assistant if you have any or if you are a teaching assistant you can add the uh, main course professor um, right from here also um, you may be adding uh, your chairman of the department or coordinator here so that they will be regularly monitoring the progress of your course uh, the QEC representative representative uh, can be added as a student so they will be able to see the progress uh, going on as a student there because they cannot change the course content like students or they cannot you should not allow them to change the uh, classwork or stream here as well so they will be able to respond on the streams but not they will not be able to create many of the things and all the restrictions of the students will be uh, on them as well so they will be still be able to observe 
the quality of your coursework so it is advisable to um, as per policy of your department you may be adding qvc representative in students and chairman and coordinator as a co-teacher adding them is easy just clicking this invite teacher as i've shown earlier you can type their uh, name for example and, uh, and then you can select their email address and then simply click invite they will be you'll see an invite option here and then you can um, uh, once they will accept that invitation you will see them a, a bold in color but otherwise they will be gray gray out next is grades and in grades currently it is nothing because no students have been added yet so once you will start adding students you will be able to see the grade screen so let me take you to another course of mine which i taught in 2015 uh, to see how it looks like so how i'll click on this on classes or drawing down from here um, the old course I taught was building construction and drawing and in this we have grades and in grades here are all the students list that you added them and then there are multiple assignments and quizzes I gave them I've removed their marks uh, uh, just to be uh, for the privacy purpose some of the students have not submitted their assignments so automatically missing a word has appeared there um, uh, if you want to if some assignments have been submitted by hand or by in some other in the form of a whatsapp message or something like that you should avoid um, students uh, uh, to not to submit them by any other mean but if by any chance they have submitted it by some other means you can always come here and then give them marks out of 20 for this for example out of 100 for this particular quiz you can check it and then you can give them mark from here as well um, so here you will see not only the grades but also the maximum marks of that particular activity and the average marks that your section has gained in that particular activity so you will know that your activity was a problem from the uh, the design of the assignment or the students are facing some problems so you can start questioning uh, uh, there is uh, questioning them about it in the stream perhaps so here you'll start talking about that why the students have uh, 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 wrongly answered assign, uh, the assignment number the question number three and assignment number two for example so they will start discussing it and then you will start helping them in, in some other live sessions or maybe pre-recorded sessions or maybe some individual student needs some uh, help or you think they need some counseling for uh, related to this particular assignment so you can clicking on this student link you can see the um, uh, their uh, previous activities as well how they have worked they have uh, what are the things they have turned in uh, they haven't turned in on uh, how many grades they have uh, received and then how many things were uh, missing in their pre record and if you want uh, you can um, click on this button and email that student or if you haven't added their guardian as well you can connect uh, you can email their guardian as well about it if but then it's it depends on the policy of our department so let me go back um, from here so we have talked about grades uh, let me go back to my course that we just created so computer programming we talked about grades and it was blank so now let's go to the last thing which is the settings in the settings this is again all those things that we entered except the new thing is the class description so uh, uh, of course the students should know uh, something about this particular class so you can describe it right in here as well and we already have talked about these details so let me write here for example that the uh, python will be taught in this class and other things so in general we already came here and talked about the class code as well you can click on this you can reset it and you can copy this to be emailed or whatsapp to your students so that they can add themselves or join this class by themselves um, or you can disable it so that no more students can join this class or uh, to avoid irrelevant uh, students to be joining this class in the stream option here is an option uh, for you to allow students to post or comment in the stream 
and we want that we want them to interact with us uh, you can click on students can only comment but cannot create their own post uh, you can choose this option as well so in the post and you will be asking or uh, discussing things and students will be commenting on that or if you want it to be reserved purely for teachers only teachers posts will be there like you want to show it in the form of a notice board only so that students should not be able to comment on anything in the stream you can set this option as well but uh, for us maybe you will choose students can post and comment so that uh, you can uh, see uh, their response as well and you're always having uh, you'll always have this option to delete or even uh, ban that student or block that student from posting a particular student from posting on the stream as well so let's stick to that in the classwork on the stream option it is currently showing condensed notifications now what does it mean let's go back to the stream and see uh, let me close this for now or, or let me cancel this and then save these some changes we just did in the description and if you want all the attachments if you have done in the classwork they should also automatically appear in the stream as well you can set this option and if you don't want anything and from the classwork to automatically appear in the stream you can always hide it in the notification so what does it mean is that if i hide it uh, and if i save it now so it means that if from the stream if in the classwork tab if i'm adding something new here automatically its message or post will appear in the stream here now if you want to dedicatedly use this stream for discussion purpose and don't uh, because the students can always come to the classwork and see what's new here so you can avoid that by hiding the classwork information to be posted here automatically so this will remain neat and clean for us let's go back to the setting and here uh, we have show detail uh, deleted items now this is a setting purely for teachers now if i'm deleting anything this is off if i turn it on so what will happen is if i delete anything it will appear there as deleted for me only students cannot see that and for me if i want to know if if i want to recall that i i asked uh, and i shared a particular document in an assignment to the students but then i deleted that and and i shared some other document and if i want to recall that what was that old document that i deleted i can check this on and then those deleted items will start appearing to me as well and then i can easily see okay this is what i did earlier and then was it right or not and shall i redo it so you can um, um, go revisit the history of how you actually created things and deleted them in your cl classwork the next option here is google meet this is online live lecturing tool for google classroom so currently there is no google meet link created so you can click on generate meet link and it will create a google meet link for you to be shared with the students now here the option of visible to students is checked on this means if i save it from here and go to the stream i'll you can see the google meet link appearing on the screen here and students can always click this uh, link and they can go to the meeting whenever uh, you will start it so currently if i click on that as a teacher i can see google meet will open in another window it will ask me to select the microphone and the camera for uh, sharing my audio and video to those students um, so let me allow it from here by clicking join now you will actually start it but here at this at the moment uh, we have some options to set some things on it um, if you of course your lecture will be in english so if you turn on captioning so whatever you will be speaking will appear as captions at the bottom uh, in the written form so that students can read that beside only um, watching your lecture so the, the words from your lecture uh, will appear at the uh, bottom of your video as well um, from the settings you can set the microphone and then uh, video sources as well so and the quality of the video so if you want uh, if you know that the signals with your students will be poor so you can keep it lower quality but if you know that all students have good quality internet available you can show it in high quality video but we have checked uh, 360p works fine for online lecturing as well so once you will click join now you will see 
uh, that a uh, code will appear and then students can always um, you can share this uh, code with the students and then they can also join the meeting uh, for those students that you have um, uh, who do, for those people who have not uh, uh, access to this uh, coursework for example your uh, your chairman want to join and see that uh, how is your lecture going on and they want to perhaps for learning purpose or perhaps for uh, monitoring purpose you can share this um, uh, link with them as well and they can join uh, there too you can always add new people but uh, they all ha should have UETP shower IDs with them um, so let me close it for now and then once students will start joining your lecture they will start appearing here in the list you can see their video if you want but they will be muted hopefully in the start and whenever you uh, request them to um, on, to, uh, you can always ask a question in live video and then you can let students to uh, you can uh, respond to their um, um, answers in this way as well uh, they can respond if they have installed uh, this particular tool um, they can also respond as well um, you can uh, also take attendance currently I have so I can take the attendance in Google Sheets, I can add a Google Sheet from my Google Drive and then uh, automatically the attendance will appear uh, whenever the student will add, uh, uh, join this um, uh, class and leave that, the attendance of joining and leaving will automatically be updated in that particular uh, Google Sheet. So this is Meet Attendance Tool. Um, they, these tools uh, are uh, and then they should be uh, added separately in uh, Chrome. Uh, the sideboard is a one which you can use to show students uh, things that you want to draw live. For example, I want to draw this and then if I want to draw a better rectangle, I can draw a better rectangle. Um, I can always delete things by selecting that from there uh, and if you uh, want to change the color you can always uh, do, um, change the color and then draw different things and turn it off so it's a good tool for drawing things so for example this length is B and this is the height H you can also type here by writing a width and then you can always select uh, these things and then you can increase their size move their positions you can adjust your drawing as well by selecting and so on so this was another tool let me close this now um, you can um, uh, if you want to share your screen for teaching purpose you can also click on uh, for, for, they will be seeing your video here but then if you want to share your screen you can click on present now and uh, the students will be able to see the PowerPoint or PDF file on your screen directly from there. Um, if you click on these more options here, you can start recording of your lecture so that if students cannot join, some of the students cannot join the class now, they can always watch it again. So automatically this will be recorded and stored in your Google Drive. There are further other options that you can turn on and off from Meet. Uh, also, once your lecture is complete, uh, you request students to uh, um, get out from the class. So they will check themselves or log out from the classroom and you will see they uh, in uh, here being uh, they, they being removed automatically from here. Once all the students are out, only then you leave the class so that you don't allow students to keep chatting with each other um, 
as well. So if you by a mistake uh, close this window and your recording is on, then don't worry, your recording will still be uploaded to your Google Drive. So this was about me. Let me close it from here. Um, let me go back to the settings and from down here this was about google meet for live lectures um, if you don't want this link to appear anymore or if so many students or irrelevant people know this link you can always click this and reset the link uh, and now it has, this course has a new link that no one else have yet uh, here from here you can set your grading policy so, for example, um, currently uh, the overall grade calculation, uh, we haven't set any. Uh, you can set it either in the form for total points or you can have it weighted by category. So, if you select weighted by categories, you have to define some categories for uh, UETP shower. We have a category of uh, sessionals, midterm and final term. So, let it be, for example, assignments are 15% and let me add another category of quizzes be 10 percent and then we have a uh, uh, lab report be 25 um, percent and then finally we have viva which will be 50 remaining 50 percent so here we have right here so now whatever assignment will be categorized in assignments they will be total marked in 15 for quizzes uh, categories they will be marked accordingly so do you want students to see their own individual grades you can turn them this option on otherwise keep it off for now let me save it so this way you can these are the complete settings of your classroom teachers can also check their weekly calendar to see how busy their week will be they can access that uh, from these ellipses and then clicking on calendar so this particular calendar is for week 12 starting from sorry a week starting from 12th of april and uh, if you want to see how previous week was uh, what are the things that you have done haven't completed yet and what is going to be in the next week uh, so you can see there are some activities in uh, the week starting from 26th and there's nothing but uh, starting from 19th there are two assignments uh, one is already been assigned the color is saying that one who is scheduled but has not been assigned yet so it's blue color is identifying that but this has already started and uh, students um, will be working on this particular assignment for this week and I, I can see now that i have nothing much to do except marking this assignment so if you click it you will see that this is related to a subject where i am a teaching assistant which is qs and cep and i can see there is a, a among students there is one of the student here who has already been assigned uh, 99 marks so my professor might have a colleague professor might have marked uh, this student uh, uh, this way so this is just a mock one so there will be all other students there and the, you you will see a blank mark there so you can click uh, that particular uh, cell and then you can change their marks or edit them and you can discuss uh, their marks if you want as you can see some discussion being done among the professor with the student uh, a, a dummy student here and uh, if you um, want to see all the grades you will see how many assignments uh, you have left to be assigned so this there's only one assignment for this particular course if there are other assignments you might see them here as well um, uh, this uh, one of them uh, was turned in because there was only one student so it was one here but then now teacher has marked it so it has been now shifted to the graded one and uh, you, you can see that listed here uh, if clicking this link you will it will take you to google drive where you will see this submitted assignment and you can read it you can comment on it to the student you can communicate it with the student until the deadline of the assignment is completed and then if you can ask them to improve it if you if they if they want um, and uh, here we are currently seeing the student work where you can see currently we are seeing all students so uh, you can check them you can make uh, send a, a message to all these students or if you want to send a message to a particular student you can select that particular student currently all the students are actually only one student so you can actually select one and then send a message to 
that particular screen from here as well. Uh, if you want to see what was the actual assignment, so you can click on instructions and you can see the assignment you created, who created that, and then what was uh, this uh, the instruction in there. There was some connected uh, uh, link to a website there too. So um, they, you can see that. So currently this is for one subject and for all the subjects, again, if you click on the calendar, you can see everything about all the subjects you are covering and uh, again uh, next week i can see that uh, i will st uh, automatically i have scheduled it and automatically assigned one assignment to be uh, automatically to be assigned on that particular day on 20th of april but then this assignment i'm going to mark it uh, I can start marking it from now. Uh, so uh, currently for this particular subject, if you remember, there was no student there. So there will be, it will be a blank list. Also, you can click on these ellipses and look at the to-do list. This for teacher, it will tell you a to-do list for all your courses that you are busy in. So this here, I can see that for uh, a particular subject, uh, there was there, there were three these three assignments um, one uh, there was three these activities uh, these are assigned to 10 co uh, students this is assigned to only one student because in this particular class there was only one student actually and here none of them have turned in their assignment because their deadline is actually not reached yet but if uh, some of them have turned in you can always click it and you can see their assignments and then you can uh, uh, you can uh, communicate with that individual student about that as well. Um, so what they have turned in, if you want to see the uh, assign, uh, assignments, so these are assigned to all these people, but then how many of them turned in or only two. So if you click that, so only two turned in. And if you want to grade any one of them, for example, this particular student, I, I, I can um, click here and then I can see there is uh, there um, I can communicate with them from here sending them a message that, uh, about anything if you click here you can uh, after giving them marks for example 10 out of 10 you can return it to that student to know that they have, this is what they have achieved in this particular course and uh, if you want to write any comment on it so let me say okay well done and uh, we, I, I'll just simply return it now. So now you will see that uh, in graded, there's a separate group of graded students. So uh, we have uh, one graded assignment and all these are left to be graded. And is that uh, this student has also turned in their result, but these have these people have been assign the assignment but haven't turned in their assignments yet but this particular student has turned in their assignment so we can check it we cannot check them because they haven't uh, turned in any document yet but if they have turned in anything uh, not through class uh, google classroom but by email or by any uh, other whatsapp message or so you can still give them marks now if you have if you have marked uh, all these students and you want to export uh, this particular assignment to excel you can click on the settings button and then you can copy download all in the form of csv or uh, all means all the assignments this assignment one and then assignment two assignment three any quizzes everything will get downloaded uh, but then um, if you um, click on uh, copy all grades to Google Sheets, it will open another um, window for you for that. For example, let me click this. Now it will open a blank Google Sheet for you and then it will pr provide all the grades and all the statistics of this course there in the form of Excel. So currently for to all these students, we have given these three assignments. One of them have been graded, uh, others have been, we haven't received any back yet and so on. And this is the total uh, uh, weighted percentage. So this particular student has got 100% marks yet. And this concludes this tutorial. Thank you very much.